I'm Michael Weber, Artistic Director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theater. Opening on Broadway September 6, 1927, at the 46th Street Theater, Good News was the quintessential collegiate musical, and the decade's jazzy sounds, assertive and explosive beat, football frenzy, and sophomoric hijinks were joyously mirrored in a stage show that helped popularize the era's dance crazes with its big hit number, The Varsity Drag. Bringing the joyful atmosphere right out into the auditorium and to emphasize the collegiate atmosphere of the performance, the theater ushers wore jerseys, and the production's musicians and conductor reached the orchestra pit by running down the aisles as they shouted college cheers. The songwriting trio of B.G. De Silva, Lou Brown, and Ray Henderson were among the top tunesmiths of their time during a partnership together that lasted between 1925 and 1930 when their publishing company was sold. Serving up such delectable and hummable hits of the era such as You're the Cream in My Coffee, Button Up Your Overcoat, I'm a Dreamer, Aren't We All?, Birth of the Blues, The Thrill is Gone, and many, many others, all three writers had successful and fascinating careers on their own, including work in Hollywood. That included adaptations of Good News, which was twice filmed at MGM Studios, first in 1930 featuring Mary Lawler as Connie Lane and Gus Shy as Bobby Randall from the original Broadway cast, and again in 1947, starring June Allison as Connie Lane and Peter Lawford as Tom Marlowe. Here, from the October 4th, 1948 episode of The Railroad Hour, are Dinah Shore as Connie Lane, Gordon McRae as Tom Marlowe, and Jane Powell as Babe O'Day in Good News. Ladies and gentlemen, The Railroad Hour. And from Hollywood, here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, your railroads through the Association of American Railroads present the delightful musical comedy hit, Good News. In our star-studded cast, you will hear the host of our series, Gordon McRae. Two lovely guest stars, Dinah Shore and Jane Powell, and a great cast of Hollywood featured players. The entire production set to the music of Carmen Dragon's Orchestra and brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gordon McRae helping to bring you the first in our series of musical comedy successes. Tonight, the Railroad Hour Show Train presents the Lawrence Schwab, De Silva, Brown, and Henderson musical hit, Good News, starring Dinah Shore as Connie Lane, Jane Powell as Babe O'Day, yours truly as Tommy Marlowe, and a great supporting cast including Jim Backus, Mary Lee Robb, Lou Merrill, and Rye Billsbury. Marvin Miller is our announcer. Our chorus is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our orchestra is presided over by maestro Carmen Dragon, who is now playing the final strains of our title number, Good News. Now the curtain rises on the first act of Good News. In the huge gymnasium on the campus at Tate College, Babe O'Day, a blue-eyed little blonde co-ed, is trying to teach a new dance step to a group of freshmen. Stop the music! Stop the music! Of all the 
dumb clunks, you freshmen take the prize. Now, if you kids want to be in the swim at the dance tomorrow night, after our team beats Colton, you better pay attention and learn this step. I'm going to show you just once more, and that's all. So watch carefully. Okay, maestro, give. Here is the drag. See how it goes. Down on the heels, up on the toes. That's the way to do the varsity drag. Hotter than hot, newer than new, meaner than mean, bluer than blue. It's as much applause as waving a flag. You can pass many a class, whether you're dumb or wise. If you all answer the call when your professor cries. Everybody down on the heels, up on the toes. Stay after school, learn how it goes. Everybody do the varsity drag. Come on, kids, break it up. Break it up, I said. Oh, just a minute, Beef Saunders. What's the big idea? Tommy Marlowe's going to meet me here in the gym any minute. Tommy Marlowe? It beats me why Tate's greatest football star wants to waste time with a lug like you. Well, if you must know, i got to teach him a couple of secret plays to pull in the game with Colton tomorrow. You're going to teach Tommy Marlowe football? <laughs> That's like Marjorie Maine showing Jane Russell how to wear a bathing suit. Come on, everybody, once more. Down okay, on your heels, if you up. don't believe me, here's Tommy now. Ask him yourself. <laughs> Hi, fellas. Hi, gals. Say, what's going on, babe? You showing the kids how to do the varsity drag? Let's get more on the beat, Tommy. Let's say trying to show them. This bunch doesn't have any more backbone than a plate full of jelly. Oh, now look, kids. The varsity drag is something everybody ought to know. It's one of the nicest subjects you can learn at Tate, you see? We've always thought knowledge is not. We should be taught to dance right here at Tate. We're up to date. We teach a great new dance. First lesson right now. You love it and how you love it Here is the drag, see how it goes Down on the heels, up on the toes That's the way to do the varsity drag Hotter than hot, newer than new Meaner than mean, bluer than blue Get this much applause of waving a flag Well, you can pass many a class Whether you're dumb or wise If you all answer the call When the professor cries Everybody, Everybody down on your heels, heels up, up on your toes, toes. What's up, Bobby? Well, Coach Johnson's holding a special meeting with the team down in his office. I guess everybody's going to be there, because i got to go, too. Coach even wants the substitutes, huh, Bobby? Oh, lay off his beals. You're speaking of the man I love. Bobby, I thought you preferred the athletic type. Bobby is the athletic type. He plays football. Uh, preferably quarterback. He plays baseball. Preferably shortstop. He wrestles. Preferably women. <laughs> well, don't worry about it, Bobby. You'll get your chance to play tomorrow, all right. In my place. What? Oh, no, you're, you're kidding, aren't you, Tommy? No, Bobby, I'm not kidding. Didn't pass my astronomy exam. Professor Kenyon just told me. Oh, Tommy, no. If you can't play, we're licked. Colton will beat us 50 to nothing. Oh. Oh. Tommy? Tommy, darling. Oh, uh, Pat, hello. I just heard the devastating news. How could you fail to pass, Tommy? How could you? When you knew perfectly well that I bought a new gown for the prom. Well, Tommy, isn't there any chance at all that you can play? Well, there's just a slim chance, Bobby. Professor Kenyon is going to give me another exam. And, Pat, you're so good in astronomy that I thought if you'd help me study, I, I might be able to pass. Oh, Tommy, darling, you know I'll help you. Uh, I was sure you would, Pat. Why, I would have bet my last nickel on it if I were a betting man. And aren't you a betting man? I don't ever gamble, sweetheart, I refuse Not because I hate to, simply cause I always lose Lucky boys who gamble, tell me that it pays But I've got luck that beats their luck a thousand different ways Lucky in love, lucky in love. What else matters if you're lucky in love? Good breaks are few, few skies are blue, but bad luck scatters. 
remembers every time I'm with you. I don't mind that at poker I'm green. If I stand ace high with a beautiful queen, I'll say I'm lucky in love. If you take me, that will make me oh so lucky in love. I stand as high with a beautiful queen. I'll say I'm lucky in love. If you take me, that will make me You are sweet. Oh, but I must leave, darling. I have an engagement. Well, gosh, Pat, I, I ought to start studying right now. Can't you break it? Break an engagement with my hairdresser? Oh, darling, that's impossible. I'll meet you, says why, at the bench behind the chemistry laboratory. Around 80. I still don't understand why you dragged me down here to this little bench behind the chem lab. Oh, Connie, darling, I'm in trouble, dreadful trouble. Do you know Tommy Marlowe? No. Oh, of course I know that he's the captain of the football team and that he's your friend, but I don't know him. Well, you're going to. Oh, Pat, when? Tonight. You heard that Tommy didn't pass his astronomy exam. Well, yes, but they say you're going to tutor him. Well, I was, but... But confidentially, Beef Saunders' new car was just delivered, a luscious red convertible, and he's asked me to go riding with him. So I want you to take my place. Oh, I could Oh, there's Beef now. I'll have to run. Oh, Pat, Pat. Oh, here comes Tommy. Oh, do, do, do I look all right? Well, you look perfect, darling. And anyway, all you're going to tutor him in is astronomy. He'll learn about women from me. Bye. Gosh, Pat, I didn't expect you'd be running time. I... Oh... Pardon me, I thought you were Pat Bingham. I'm I'm Connie Lane, Mr. Marlowe. Pat asked me to meet you at this bench and help you with your astronomy. She, uh, she, she has a terrible headache. Oh, the poor kid, that's too bad. And it's nice of you to help, but trying to teach me anything is going to be pretty tough to take. Sort of like going to the dentist. Oh, no, it won't, Mr. Marlowe, because I'm going to put something in your head, not take it out. Well, I guess there's plenty of room, and, uh... Won't you call me Tommy? All right, Tommy. Now, what is it about astronomy that's so difficult for you? You know, I just this minute figured that out. Something has always been missing before. Astronomy is a subject for uh, two to study. Good. Well, then open your textbook to page 85. You think there's enough light from the street lamp to see? Oh, yes. And everything I see is very beautiful. The stars are beautiful tonight, aren't they? Oh, I wasn't thinking of the stars. But you must if you're going to pass that exam tomorrow. Now tell me, what planet is that? Planet? Oh, well, let's see. Uh, oh, what's the use of guessing? There's too many of them. All right, I'll tell you. That's Venus. You see? Yes, I see. I'm looking right at her, and she's beautiful. Well, I... I don't know how Patricia would like my being Venus. Oh? What do you know about Patricia? She's my cousin. Your cousin? Well, then why haven't I seen you before around the sorority house? Oh, I'm not a member. I'm sort of a poor relation, you know. Well, does that worry you much? Not particularly. A lot of things in this world make up for the shortage of money. I'm listening, teacher. Well? 
There are so many kinds of riches And only one of them is gold The wealth you miss Remember this Worthwhile things cannot be bought or sold Belongs to everyone The best things in life are free The stars belong to everyone They gleam there for you and me The flowers in spring the robins that sing, the moonbeams that shine, they're yours, they're mine, and love can come to everyone. The best things in life. Gee, I never thought of things that way before, Connie. And, you know, from now on, that's my philosophy, too. Please, Tommy, we're wasting time. Now, Now, what's that other planet way up there? Oh, wait a minute. I, I used to know. Now, don't tell me. Never mind. It's Mars. Oh, yes. Faithful old Mars. Still there. <laughs> of course. Mars is in the same constellation as Venus, and he looks right across at her all the time. Can you remember that? Well, how can Mars forget? With Venus right here at his side. Oh, Tommy, please. You have to study. I know. And you've already taught me so much. The flowers in spring, the robins that sing, sunbeams that shine, they're yours. They're mine. And love. And so down comes the curtain on the first act of that grand musical comedy, Good News, brought to you by the Railroads of the Nation, cooperating through the Association of American Railroads. And now I'd like to present to you William T. Farrisey, president of that association. Tonight, Mr. Farrisey is in St. Louis, Missouri, attending a meeting of the National Association of Shippers' Advisory Boards. Mr. Farrisey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> As you have just heard, there is now meeting in St. Louis an organization representing the shippers of most of the nation's freight. These businessmen, 25,000 of them, work with the railroads to improve service. You and I and everybody in the country benefit directly from their cooperation. Long ago, the railroads learned that to give the very best service, they not only had to work with each other, but also with the public. Twenty-five years ago, one group of their customers set up the first Regional Shippers Advisory Board. The work of the board was so valuable that soon there were 13 boards covering the entire country. In 1937, they joined to form the National Association of Shippers Advisory Boards. These boards, while working with the railroads, are not made up of railroad men. Instead, they are made up of shippers who work with each other and with the railroads to help provide the whole country 
with more adequate and more efficient transportation of freight. These boards made their greatest contribution so far during the Second World War, when their consistent, organized help was one of the things which made it possible for the railroads to handle the tremendous volume of wartime traffic in such a way as to shorten the timetable to victory. So tonight, we take pleasure in saluting the Shippers Advisory Boards and their National Association for their great contribution to meeting the transportation needs of America. And the railroads of America, your railroads, welcome you, all of you, to the first Railroad Hour. And now the curtain rises on the second act of Good News. It's the next morning, and Tommy Marlowe is walking up the steps of Astronomy Hall, ready to take his examination. When he's stopped by the voice of his roommate, Bobby Randall, calling excitedly, Hey, Tommy! Tommy! What's the matter, Bobby? Well, how's the astronomy? You gonna pass that test? Oh, I sure am. I was coached last night by the most wonderful girl in the world. You mean uh, Pat Bingham? No, her cousin, Connie Lane. Oh, Bobby, she's a dream. Yeah, but uh, what about Pat? The queen is dead. Long live the queen. You, you mean it, Tommy? Well, certainly I mean it. Why? Why, I love Pat, Tommy. Why, well, I've loved her from the very first day you laid eyes on her. But I, I was too honorable to say so, and besides, you outweigh me. <laughs> then bless you, my children, bless you. Oh, Patricia, if I ever get a chance Shut to... Shut up, Bobby, oh. here she comes. Well, I'll run along and let you give her the RKO privately. The RKO? Yeah, the royal kiss-off. <laughs> Good luck, pal. Tommy, oh, Tommy, darling, I want to apologize to you. Apologize? Well, when I asked Connie to help you out, I didn't think she'd be stupid enough to make you study all night. I didn't find her stupid. She wants me to pass. You mean I don't? Why, you must know me better than that, Tom, or you never would have proposed to me. Uh, yes, I, I did propose, didn't I? Did you? I have it in writing. I always keep the letter right here, next to my heart, you know. Well, the fatal hour has struck. I go to my doom. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. I, I was afraid I wouldn't get here in time to wish you luck. Well, thank you, Venus. Go to it, Mars. And Tommy, here's a kiss from me to wish you the best. Uh, there's the last bell. Well, uh, so long and thanks for everything. Oh, I want him to pass. Tom Marlowe, you've just got to pass. Why, Connie, darling, I never knew you were such a rooter for the school. Oh, I love the school. <laughs> well, just don't let that affection bubble over onto Tom Marlowe, darling. Remember, he's mine, if I want him. And I'll want him if he passes that exam this morning. Well, maybe he is yours, but... Just imagine That he loves me dearly Must imagine that I'm his sincerely I'm pretending That he's sending Love notes ending I love you Seems that he's there As the day is closing on his knees I hear him proposing He's not present Still it's pleasant To imagine that it's true
the exam over yet? Oh, not yet, Bobby, but I'm not worried. Yeah. Connie says he'll pass all right. Oh, by the way, Connie, I thought you were going to press my dress for the football rally before the game. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Patricia. I'll do it right away. Uh, yes, Connie, you press the dress while I press my suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bobby, you're certainly funny when you get started. I am? Yes. Why don't you get started? Oh, there you go, Pat. No one understands me. I'm a serious-minded young man. Well, don't start making love to me if you want me to be serious. I'll go on. Necking is out of my line. It is silly, isn't it? Oh, it sure is. Now, take your hand, for instance. It's a nice hand, but as I hold it, it, it doesn't give me any thrill. Why? Well, it's power of mind over matter. Why, Bobby, you're a psychologist. Yeah, I've given 15 years of my life to it. And then, then there's the kiss. You know, the most overrated thing in the world. It, it's all in the mental attitude. Let me show you. Now that it's over, what have you got? Wet lips. You're right. Well, certainly. Now, now you just take your knees, for instance. Bobby! Ouch! Mind over matter. Well, matter got the best of mind for a minute. How dare you make love to me, your roommate's fiancé? Well, I thought it was all off between you and Tom. Off Nothing. I'm going to marry him if he passes the exam and wins the game tomorrow. Hey, what's going on here? Oh, hello, Beef. Got that convertible handy, Beef? Sure. Oh, good. I'll let you drive me back to the sorority house if you like. Why, swell. I'll bring the news about Tommy's exam up to the house. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what's happened, Bobby? Is the exam over yet? Uh, well, not yet, babe. We, we're just... Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, my gosh. Here, here comes Professor Kenyon now. Oh. Well, good morning, students. Well, Lovely we... day, isn't it? Well, we <laughs> hope it's going to be, Professor. Oh? Well, what do you mean? Well, you know, sir, this afternoon, Tate plays Colton. And oh, we've got yes, a... yes, I know. I'm very much interested in football. You are? Gee, that's great. I should very much like to see Tate beat Colton this afternoon. You would? Gee, that's great. Then tell us, Professor... How did Tom Marlowe do in the examination you just gave him? Oh, yes, Tom Marlowe. Well, here's his paper. Let's see. Uh, uh, listen to this. Sir J. Herschel estimated there are a billion stars down to the 18th magnitude. What holds them in place? Uh, that was my question. And now here's Tom Marlowe's answer. Mars and Venus, they are in the same constellation, and he looks across at her all the time. Oh, even I know that ain't right. Oh, gosh. Uh, tell me, just how good is this Colton team? Oh, terribly good, Professor. And do we need Tom Marlowe to win? Do we? We could use Glenn Davis, too. <laughs> well, let me see. 75 is the passing grade. You can tell Mr. Marlowe that his grade on this examination is 76. What? <laughs> you can't say I haven't the old Tate spirit. Oh, Professor Kenyon, you got the spirit of 76. Well, I told you we'd come up here to the sorority house and tell you the news about Tom's examination, didn't I, Pat? Well, yes, but I didn't expect such a crowd. The team, the yeah. band, everybody. But everybody wanted to give you the good news. Good news? Yes. Tommy passed his examination. And now he can play this afternoon. And we'll win, too. I know he will. You know, I've had a dozen omens lately that everything is going to be all right. So I know good news must be on its way. Of the night I saw my lucky star. Saw that new moon shining from afar Saw a horse and he was milky white So I know that things will be all right Then I saw a lucky load of hay That means good news must be on its way When he's nigh, I'll cry Where have you been? Take your hat and coat and come right in Good news, you're bound to do me Come right here to me, good news, good news, you're 
what I waited for. I was enslaved for blues. Good news is magic to me. Bad news is tragic to me. So, Mr. Good News, your fancy do me good. Come right here to me, good news. Hi, kids. What's all the shouting for? Tommy. Hey, everybody. Here he is. Here's Tommy Marlowe. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. What is it? What's going on? You passed, Tommy. You passed the examination. I did? Oh, boy. That's good news. You're bound to do me good. Come right here to me. Good news. Good news. You're what I've waited for. I was enslaved for blues. Good luck is magic to me. Bad luck is tragic to me. So, Mr. Good News. Darling, I'm so pleased. Now you can play this afternoon and you can win the game for me. Uh, for Tate, you mean, Pat. And if I'm awful lucky. Say, uh, you haven't seen Connie around, have you? Oh, not since this morning, darling. Oh, uh, I wanted to thank her for all she's done. Oh, there she is over by the door. If you excuse I me, I... wouldn't go now, darling. Oh, why not, for Pete's sake? Well, you see who she's with, don't you? Oh, sure I see. Babe O'Day, Bobby Randall, and Beef Saunders. What about it? Beef, darling, he's a very jealous young man. Oh, so Connie tells me. You, you mean Connie and Beef? Oh, but of course, darling, ever since their freshman year. Come on, everybody, a cheer for Tommy Marlowe. Hey, hey, hey! hey. Rock, rock, rock! Rock, rock, rock! Marlowe! Yeah! <laughs> and now, now I have something to say. Ooh. Fellow students, I'm not here to talk about myself. <laughs> but I, I have a real surprise for you. Tomorrow, Tommy Marlowe will be the greatest halfback in the world. Why? Because there'll be something wonderful leading him on to victory. It's love. Yes, Patricia Bingham has promised that if Tommy wins a game tomorrow, she will marry him. Lucky in love, lucky in love. And fellow students, don't let's forget the little girl who worked with him, who helped him pass the exam so he can play this afternoon and win the fair Patricia. Fellow students, don't forget Connie Lane. I don't know what to say. I hope they'll be very happy. And now, Beef, if, if you've got that red convertible handy, what do you say we go for a ride? Goodbye, everybody. Connie. You see, darling? I told you she was Beef's girl. Now, aren't you going to finish the song for me? What? Oh, sure. Lucky in love. If you take me, that will make me. Mr. Pharisee, president of the Association of American Railroads, told you earlier on this program how the railroads and the shippers of the nation work together to produce better and better transportation. That's just part of the story, for there is the same sort of cooperation among the railroads themselves. Teamwork, indeed, is the very heart of better railroad transportation. Yes, this cooperation has made it possible for every car of any railroad to travel over the tracks of every other railroad in the country. More than that, these cars can be put into trains including cars from many different lines, can be repaired at any railroad shop. This is only one example of the cooperation that makes our continent-wide railroad operation possible. On this program, the Railroad Hour, 
we plan to tell you something of this fascinating story. The story back of the daily job of providing our nation with the safest, most efficient, most economical transportation in the world. We will be back with the third act of Good News in just a moment. We pause briefly now for station identification. The curtain rises on the third act of Good News. The big game between Colton and Tate is just about to begin. And as Professor Kenyon approaches the stadium, he meets Connie Lane. Well, good afternoon, Miss Lane. Uh, aren't you headed in the wrong direction? No, I'm not. Nothing and nobody in this college interests me at all. Oh? Not even the young man you tutored for the examination? No. And what's more, I hope he loses the game. Even though I did slave to make him pass the examination. Well, you did coach him. And he passed, too. He got 76. <laughs> My dear, that 76 is only one of the sins of an old professor who has a young heart in football season. <laughs> professor? <laughs> Connie, you're running the wrong direction. The game's over that way. I'm not going, babe. Now, Connie, don't be a drip. Tom didn't propose to Patricia. That is, not after he met you. Bobby told me the whole thing. Pat has a letter or something, and she's holding him to it. Now will you go to the game? But I, I, I tore up my ticket, babe. Oh, I... who needs a ticket? Come with me, my friend. I know where there's the best little hole in the fence that's big enough for the two of us to see everything. A hole in the fence? Are you sure, babe? Well, I should be. I put it there last night myself. Oh, brother, this team ought to spend half time in a powder room, not a locker room. That Colton team did to you guys in the first half was a crime. Oh, lay off, Bobby. We've only got a few minutes to rest up between halves, so dry up. Rest up from what? You didn't do anything out there. What was worrying you, Beat? Did you see the boogeyman? Haven't you ever heard about tackling? Football players don't stop when you tag them. <laughs> Gosh, I wish the coach had put me in. Boy, I'd show them. Lay off, will you? Lay off? What am I going to tell my grandchildren? Grandpa was a football player. Then I'll have to show them this suit without a spot on it. And as for injuries, the only scar I got is from a splinter off the bench. <laughs> what difference does it make? The game's lost anyway. Scores three to nothing, and if Colton keeps on like they are, we haven't got a chance. Well, we would if Tom would go out there and show the fellas how to play. Don't you know that when you play Tom, they all play with you? You never did this before. What's eating you? Oh, it's nothing, Bobby. I'll be all right. Well, if you don't win this game, you can't marry Pat. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe that's what's wrong. You don't want to marry Pat. Shut up, Bobby. Oh, sure, that's it. You're in love with Connie. You want to marry Connie Lane, don't you? Bobby, will you shut up? Now, look, don't pay any attention to him, Beef. He's out of his mind. Don't make any difference to me, Tom. If you want to marry Connie Lane, go ahead and marry her. Why? Isn't Connie your girl, Beef? His girl? Of course she isn't his girl. Beef's nuts about Patricia. He's been riding around his new red convertible for weeks. Is that true, Beef? You're not kidding now. Is that true? Sure it's true. Connie Lane thinks I'm a dumb bunny. Oh, brother! Okay, there goes the signal for the last half, fellas. Let's go out there and show that Colton team how to play football! <laughs> Cold, Connie, let me see what's happening. Gee, I think Beef just got hurt. Yeah. Oh, and there goes Bobby to help him off the field. The big clumsy lug. Hey, he's going to play. <laughs> Does he look funny without a bench under him? Oh, there can't be more than two minutes left to play. Oh, babe, supposing Tom loses the game. Well, that's what I thought he was trying to do in the first half. But something came over him in this half. If he could just get one lucky break. Well, there they go. Time's in. They've lined up. Look. They pass the ball back to Bobby. Yeah. Holy cow, he's running the wrong way. Turn around, you big lug, turn around. It's all right. He's just fading back to pass. There, he's throwing it. It's a long pass. A long forward pass to Tommy. He caught it. Tommy caught it. Oh, brother, look at him go. Tommy, run. Run. Win for Tate, Tommy. Win for Tate. He's over. He's over. It's a touchdown. Yes. It's a touchdown. Why, Connie, aren't you glad? Of course I'm glad. But Patricia... Connie, 
where are you going? Come back here. Tony! Hiya, hiya, babe. Oh, there you are, Bobby. I've been looking all over the dance floor for you. Come on out on the veranda. I want to talk to you about something. Yeah, I know it. About our marriage. Well, I... Uh... Yes, we agreed if you won the game, we'd get married. It was a very foolish thing. And I want you to let me off. What? Well, don't you know every girl in Tate is after me? Yes, and they can have you. <laughs> my business. Really, my business is taking raw material, polishing it up, and throwing it back in circulation. Oh, but, babe, those girls don't understand me. They think I'm a hero. Oh, you got to marry me. Oh, it's a good thing you said that. This brick is getting awfully heavy. <laughs> oh, nice going, kids, and, and all sorts of congratulations, but by any chance, have you seen Connie Lena? I've been looking for her all over the place. Connie didn't come to the dance, Tommy. The last I saw of her, she was sitting on that little bench behind the chemistry lab. Oh, thanks, babe. Thanks a lot. Hello, Connie. Oh, it's you. I, uh, I just found out you were here. I, I've been looking for you ever since the game. Well, you found me. So now you can go right back to the dance and to the girl you're going to marry. But the girl I'm going to marry isn't at the dance, Connie. I, I mean, the girl I hope to marry isn't at the dance. Oh, Connie, don't you see? It's, it's you I'm crazy about. Just you. Oh, Tommy. Hello, Venus. Hi, Mars. Somebody broke that street light. Some little ruffian must have thrown a rock at it. Oh, you're wrong, Miss Lane. You're wrong. I did it. Why, Professor Kenyon. Mm-hmm. For years, I've had an insane desire to smash one of those things, and, and I couldn't have picked a better time. Well, that's kind of an about face, isn't it, Professor? After that astronomy exam you threw at me this morning. Oh, don't say that, Tom. Your exam paper was awful. And the professor passed you just because he likes you. He likes me? Yes, Tom. But I'm going to leave you with someone who likes you a little better than I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my, my. Look at Mars and look at Venus. They seem closer together tonight than, than they've ever been before. And love can come to Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gordon McRae giving a special vote of thanks to our two lovely guest stars this evening, Miss Dinah Shore and Miss Jane Powell, and to the other members of tonight's cast for their fine performances in our production of Good News, which was adapted for radio by Ed Gardner. Next week, our star-studded show train will arrive in the same tracks at the same time. On board will be Mr. Victor Moore and Miss Margaret Whiting to join me in bringing you the famous Cole Porter musical, Anything Goes, with our chorus under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. All aboard! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, so until next week, goodbye. And remember, during the coming week, as always, the American Railroads will provide for you the dependable, low-cost transportation, which is so essential to the American way of living.
Good News has been presented by special arrangement with Pam's Whitmark Music Library. Miss Dinah Shore appeared by courtesy of Columbia Records. Listen to her latest release, Buttons and Bows. Miss Jane Powell appeared by arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture Three Musketeers, starring Lana Turner, Gene Kelly, and June Allison. Gordon McRae appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers. This is Marvin Miller speaking. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the Association of American Railroads. Actor Gordon McRae made his Broadway musical debut in Three to Make Ready in 1946. Jane Powell would make her debut replacing Debbie Reynolds in Irene in 1974. But Dinah Shore never appeared in a Broadway musical. She never even appeared in a film adaptation of a Broadway show. So her performance in today's production was a rare opportunity to experience her stage stardom that might have been. If the actor who played Bobby sounded familiar to you, it was the voice of Thurston Howell III and Mr. Magoo himself, Jim Backus. Old radio lovers may have recognized the voice of actor Mary Lee Robb as Pat from her many years playing Marjorie on The Great Gildersleeve. A bio of the Good News creative team was captured as the 1956 20th Century Fox film The Best Things in Life Are Free, in which Ray Henderson, Lou Brown, and B.G. De Silva were played by Dan Daly, Ernest Borgnine, and none other than today's star, Gordon McRae. In October 1949, a remarkable evening of entertainment began on NBC Radio when the Railroad Hour, starring Gordon McRae, led off a list of long-running radio stalwarts, including the Bell Telephone Hour, the Voice of Firestone, and the City's Service Band of America, becoming the must-hear weekly listening for most households. Theaters across the country need your support now, more than ever. We hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org. Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio, I'm Michael Weber.